In my latest isometric room videos, I showed a simple animation of the room in the beginning of the video. And some of you said that you would be interested in a tutorial on how you can animate your own room. So in this video, you will learn everything that you will need to know about creating a simple animation yourself. So first things first. Normally with isometric rooms, you have your camera set to orthographic. But for an animation, we need to make sure that our camera is set back to the perspective mode. I will also change my camera's resolution back to the aspect ratio of a video. Once done, place your camera back in a position where the entire room is visible in the frame. Now we can almost start animating. To make sure the animation process is a lot simpler, we are going to join together objects. So let me explain what I mean by this. Take for example the chair in my scene. We're not going to animate every single part of the chair because this will take a lot of effort and will become very complicated. Instead, we're going to combine every object that the chair is made up out of into a single chair object. So that we only have to animate that one object to animate the entire chair. To join together objects in a correct way, select all of the individual objects and press Ctrl A and select Visual Geometry to Mesh. By doing this, you will apply any possible modifier to your object that they may have had. Next, with all the individual objects still selected, press Ctrl J. This will join all of the objects together into a single object. Now let's also make sure that the origin is inside of the object itself. Do this for every single object in your scene. If you want to animate as little objects as possible, you can also even join multiple separate objects together. But don't do this if you want your animation to have more details. We are also going to create two different collections. In the first collection, we will place all of our finished objects that are ready to be animated. Once we have animated an object, we will place that object in the second collection. This way, we can very easily see which objects have and haven't been animated yet. Another thing I will do in advance before animating is adding multiple cameras to the timeline. I want to create an animation where eventually the cameras start to move through the room. To add multiple cameras to the timeline, I will first duplicate my original camera two times. Then I will add a marker to the timeline and with a specific camera selected, I will press bind camera to marker. Do this for all of your cameras and as you can see, this will make it so that your viewport and the render will automatically switch cameras based on the markers. The first thing that we're going to animate is the base of our room. So with the base of our room selected, go forth a couple of frames and press I to add a location, rotation and scale keyframe. Then go back to the first frame. Here I will rotate my room on its Z axis and also change its scale to zero. Once done, add in a new keyframe and if we would play back our scene, you can see that we've animated the base of our room. To give the animation some more detail, I will add a third keyframe between the ones that we already have. For this keyframe, I will over rotate the room a little bit so that in the final animation, the room's rotation has a little more life to it. If you're like me and you've built the floor using array modifiers, we can animate the floor as well. Go to the point where the base of a room has stopped rotating, decrease the count value and give them a keyframe. Then go to the point where you want the floor to be done animating, increase the count values again and add a new keyframe for both the array modifiers. As you can see, we have now also animated the floor. If you don't want the arrays to start and end at the same time, you can always clear one of their keyframes and animate one of them with a little bit of time offset. Also, just before the floor starts to animate, make sure to give it two scale keyframes so that it pops into existence, like this. Now it's time to animate the objects in our scene. I will start by animating the bigger objects in our scene. For the bigger objects, we are not going to add animations that are too complex. They are simply going to scale up and fly into place. Later on, we will animate the smaller objects with more fun spins and rotations. But if you would do the same for the bigger objects as well, the scene would get very distracting. So let's keep it simple for now. 
for animating objects, the process is basically the same as animating the base of a room. Add in a keyframe at the time and place where you want the object to be finished animating. Then go a couple of frames earlier, move the object slightly away and change the scale to zero. And then of course add in another keyframe. I would recommend only moving the object away on a single axis because otherwise it may again become a little bit too distracting. Do this same process over and over for all the bigger objects in your scene. Also make sure to give each animation a small offset from the other one so that not all objects appear at the same time but slowly after each other. For the smaller object we can have a little bit more fun. Instead of only animating the location and scale of each object, let's also give them some rotation. This way the objects won't be boringly floating in, but they are actually interesting to look at. Once again, repeat this process for all of the remaining objects. Now onto some other important notes. Once we have animated our entire room, I will go and animate the other cameras that we have added to our scene before. Once you are also going to animate the other cameras, make sure to select the camera keyframes and set their interpolation mode to linear. This will make sure that the camera moves at a constant speed. If you've got lights in the scene like I do, you don't want them to stay static while everything else rotates and moves around. Therefore, we are going to need to parent the light to the objects with which they interact the most. Do this by selecting the specific lights and also the specific objects that you want them to be parented to. Then press Ctrl P and parent them. If you would now play back the scene, you would see that the lights appear together with the objects. I will also animate the light value of the lights so that they slowly turn on. This process is the same as adding in keyframes to the array modifiers like we did earlier in this video. Finally, render settings. Because we're creating a video and not a single picture, we can turn down our render settings a lot. If you're interested, here are the render settings I used for this project. My resolution was 1920 by 1080. For the render, I had the sample rate set to 100 and I turned the denoiser on. And on the light paths, I set the max bounces total to 4. I hope that this video helped you. If you have any questions, feel free to place them in the comments below. Good luck with your renders. Bye.